All right, hey everybody. I'm going to give you a few minutes to hop on and uh, learn a little bit about some chemicals in the home. If it's really, if I turn flaming red, that's because it's really warm in here with all the lights to make it somewhat bright. And um, I have some critters down here. If you see random dogs walk by, it's because they are joining me for this broadcast. Don't know why. All right, so to begin, it is, um, we're just gonna learn briefly, I'm gonna try to keep this under 30 minutes, so I'm gonna try to start on time. I am going to just briefly let you know about some of the toxins and I'm going to pick very specific ones because we know a little bit more about them um, or we've heard them more I should say and then some alternatives. So first and foremost, your skin. Your skin is the largest organ in your body. Your skin is a physical barrier and protectant to your internal organs. And it also um, protects against viruses and bacteria, bad bacteria, but it promotes, it's an environment that promotes good bacteria. So it is one of the most important things that you can take care of. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's everywhere, it's your skin. So you need to be aware of what goes on your skin, goes on your hair, which is attached to your skin, all of those things. Um, your skin also helps seal in moisture and protects your body, which is very important. Everybody knows what dry skin feels like. No fun. So what can we do um, to harm our skin? We can apply chemicals. And you can apply chemicals that are in your eyeshadow. Eyeshadow, put it over your eye and it can absorb into those mucous membranes. Your eye. You use hairspray and um, perfume and uh, different powders which can settle on the skin and then be absorbed or you uh, inhale them, which are all bad things to do. Lipstick, you put it on your lips. You do it all day every day and it ends up being ingested. Yet another place for a chemical to enter into your body. Sunscreens, you put them all over your body and they are absorbed into your body. Shampoo, you as you wash it, it's going to rinse down into your face or to your baby's face, your kiddo's face, your dog's face, and it can get into their eyes. It will be seeping into their skin. So these chemicals are able to penetrate in several different ways. And if you think about it, if you were to ingest a chemical, if you were to ingest your shampoo, for instance, um, it's going to go into your stomach, which is a very acidic environment, and that will help break down, don't recommend it, not a good thing, it's not like it's going to protect you, but it will help break down and filter some of those chemicals out. But your skin is a natural filter in that it will help when you perspire, it helps release toxins, but it also absorbs them. And the way it works is when you absorb them, and it's actually going to absorb into your body and into your bloodstream. And once it's in your bloodstream, it is circulating through your body into your major organs, into your brain, to your heart, to your lungs, to your liver, spleen, kidney, whatever it is, and it's able to access those. So when you put a chemical on your skin, in your hair, on your lips, on your eyes, whatever the case may be, you are giving it a direct pathway into your bloodstream, which is a direct pathway to your organs and precious little things like your heart and your brain that you need. If you have either one of those, which sometimes I probably have neither. Um, all right, moving on. So, well, when people say, that's okay, because I use organic makeup. I use all natural products. And Good for you. Good for trying. Good for you for being aware of the situation and knowing that there are chemicals out there that you don't want on your body. Crappy part is that it doesn't matter. Unless it is USDA certified organic. I'm Italian. I'm going to talk with my hands. I'm sorry. So unless it's USDA certified organic, it means nothing. Bupkis. What that means is it can have a naturally derived, a plant derived ingredient 
but then they exploit it with petrochemicals or other chemicals to transform it into another ingredient. You can have an organic ingredient, ingredient. You can have a singular organic ingredient and it can be labeled organic. You can have a single digit percentile of all your ingredients, single digit percentile labeled and, and it be labeled organic. And, and that's not what it is. You're not putting powder on your face that's organic. You're putting a powder on your face that has an organic compound, but the rest is crap. So, <laughs> all right, will do. Thank you, Melanie. So just keep that in mind, that when you're looking at your products and when you are looking at your um, makeup and your body washes and all of that, just because it says it's organic or natural doesn't mean it is. And look at your list of ingredients. If they have to list the ingredients according to amount. So if you are getting a calendula lotion or shampoo or whatever you want and it's the last ingredient, it's not calendula. It, it's not. It's whatever the first ingredient is. So keep that in mind. All right, moving on. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna let you know I have done a lot of research and I, I, I got really upset. So if I get a little fiery, I'm sorry. Um, you can tell me to pipe down, calm down, move on, and I will. I also will post, some of us did a lot of research, um, and I will make a graphic or a Word document, I think is what you all wanted, and post that tomorrow. Before I get into this, it is first and foremost very important for me to say I am not a doctor. I am not a physician, I am not a nurse, I do not have a medical degree. What I do have is the ability to do research and to make decisions um, for my family and in their best interest. So with that being said, what I'm going to say isn't going to diagnose, cure, prevent, whatever you want to say, um, any disease, anything like that. But I just want to inform you, and you do your research, do not rely on me alone. Go to the Environmental Working Group, EWG.org. Go to the FDA. They're not quite as open about it. Go to the CDC. Go to PubMed. If you type in PubMed on Google, it will populate. It's the National Institutes of Health um, website where it brings together all of the Library of Medicines and all of the articles nationally and internationally that have been done on a topic. Type that bad boy in, whatever you're looking for, and you will find an insane amount of information. You may have to go through some really dry material, and you may have to dig to find it, but click abstracts, and it will show you the short version of what the um, article or the research is about. So keep that in mind, and don't take me at my word. Do your own research. However, with all that being said, I have done a lot. <laughs> so the first one that I want to talk about in that whole list that I posted earlier is going to be SLS and SLES, sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium laureth sulfate. So first and foremost, what are they? They are surfactants, detergents, and emulsifiers. What are those? Surfactants actually bond to either a liquid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid and help break it down. So dirt and water. They're going to help those bond together and then they're going to remove it. Sounds great, doesn't it? Yes. Soap, water, does all that. Soap does that by a process called saponification. And you, if you've ever made your own soap, understand how that is. You can boil um, like Castile soap, things like that. What we cannot do at home and can only be done in a bigger, more lab-like environment um, is take that basic saponification, that basic soap making to a new level. There are safer ways to do it that do not require emulsifiers um, and surfactants like sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium laureth sulfate, but the chemical industry and majority of people choose to use um, SLSs. And what those are going to do is actually they're going to make it their foaming agent. So when you get that really awesome sudsy foam on your shampoo, on your face wash, or whatever that is, 
that is going to be because of the SLS usually. And it'll say sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate, um, ammodium lauryl sulfate. It'll have a bunch of different names for it, but it's a sulfate. And the sodium lauryl laureth sulfate is a gentler form of sodium lauryl sulfate. So you might see that in a product maybe geared toward your children that's supposed to be gentle or tear-free. It's not tear-free by nature. Nature doesn't always make things tear-free. So keep that in mind. It has to be adulterated to get to that point. <sighs> Sorry, I'm getting all worked up. Okay, so the really nasty thing about sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate are that the means in which to get them there uses, and I have to give me a second, uses um, a, okay, ethylene oxide. And ethylene oxide is actually the E in sodium lorth, or the SLES, and it's how it transforms the SLS to SLES, which it's just, it's, it's a product they use to make it gentler. However, I'm going to put my hands down. However, the byproduct of that is 1,4-dioxane. And 1,4-dioxane is, um, is actually, it's a byproduct of the, the change. And it is listed on the CDC's, CDC's website as probably carcinogenic to humans, toxic to the brain and central nervous system, and kidney and livers. And it's, um, and it's one of the leading groundwater contaminants. So your suds are contaminating the groundwater that you drink. Your suds contain a known possible carcinogen and nobody seems to care. Now it's starting to gain traction. Now people are looking at this as a, uh-oh, this could be a bad thing, but I don't want to wash my hair in a carcinogen. Don't want to do it. There are alternatives. They don't have to have these products in our products. There are alternatives and safer ones that you can use. I frankly don't use a normal shampoo. I use um, soap nuts and omelet powder. I get no suds, nothing. Soap nuts actually has a little bit of suds. Not the point, I'll go into that later. Anyway, so in order to, to avoid your SLS or SLESs, you can find products that don't have them. But in order to do that, you need to actually know what constitutes an SLES or SLS. Those are going to, and these are the ones that are gonna have, that are gonna contain the 1,4-dioxane. Dioxane. So if it has a suffix, so the end of the word, that ends in oleth, loreth, mireth, anything with an eth, um, PEG, polyethylene, polyethylene glycol, polyoxyethylene, say that one really quickly, um, oxynol, polysorbate 60, and polysorbate 80. All of those fall under that category. So keep that in mind. Read your ingredients. Be aware. Oh, glad it's a countrywide problem. That's really depressing. All right, moving on. So... The issue with the FDA when it comes to these products is that they say that they're recognized as safe because the amount of product you have in there is so low that it is considered safe. Well, what do most people do every day? They take a shower, they wash their hair, they wash their face, they brush their teeth. Those are in toothpaste, by the way. You do all of these things that you, what do you do? So you go and you, um, you use your makeup foundation. You wash your clothes in a laundry detergent. You use a liquid hand soap. All of those things that foam have those in them. You obviously can find ones that don't. Try to. Because if it foams and has a really awesome suds in action, it's because of a unnatural ingredient. So when you're looking at the ingredient list of your toothpaste, of your shampoo, of your laundry detergent, 
Look for all of those that I just read off, and yes, they'll be in the document, so that you understand what you shouldn't be using. Moving on. All right, so um, this one actually makes me very angry, <laughs> really angry, and those are phthalates. Um, phthalates are a plasticizer. They're going to make a plastic more flexible and um, harder to break. And you're going to think, well, that's great. It's just in plastic. Um, they're also used as a solvent to dissolve things. You will find them in vinyl flooring, adhesives, detergents, lubricating oils, automotive plastics, plastic clothes like raincoats that I just bought my kids today, personal care products, fragrances, soaps, shampoos, hairsprays, and nail polishes, polyvinyl chloride, PVC plastics, um, which a very long list to include kids toys. Kids toys, they're in them, depressing. Anyway, so here's the issue with phthalates. You can't avoid them. They're in everything. You're being really great and eco-friendly and getting your milk in a glass container. That was fed through a plastic tube that had phthalates in them. Wow, so now your milk that has fats and has lipids in it is going through this plastic tube and pulling out the phthalate in your milk that you're drinking. Crappy. So, okay, listen, I've got a jar of, a glass jar of tomato sauce. How do they fill the glass jar of tomato sauce? With some plastic tubing. It's everywhere. You get your vegetables in a plastic bag or in a plastic box or I fed my kid out of a plastic baby food thing. Yes, I normally make my own. It didn't work out so well right now. There is plastic everywhere. You can't avoid it. However, you can reduce it. Keep in mind, a lot of these they don't have limits for because they say they're in such small quantities. But the issue is you're not getting a giant dose all at once. You're getting a cumulative effect. So Everything that you have that you interact with that has plastic in it is putting it into your body. So all you can do, and this is what made me so angry as I was feeding my child, I was like, oh, how do your green bean phthalates taste today? Frustrating. Watching my husband, you know, transfer his kombucha, which is supposed to be really good, from one bottle to the next with a plastic funnel. How do you like your phthalates today? Fantastic. You can breathe them. When you get something that's plasticky and has that smell, those are phthalate vapors along with every other chemical that you're inhaling. So now you're inhaling it, you're absorbing it everywhere. Makes me really angry. Moving on. Okay. What phthalates do, so you understand why I'm so angry, is they are A, put young children at greater risk. Think about it. Young children pick up plastic, put it in their mouth. Young children, when they sleep face down on their crib that has plastic in it, because everybody's, I can't use that word on Facebook Live. Anyway, what you have to think about is from a very young age, they are getting a cumulative effect of these phthalates, and so are we. And here's what they're, they are linked to. They have studies that have gone before the government there's a 143 page chap, the chronic hazard and blah, 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 blah. sorry, I'm mad. 143 page chronic hazard advisory panel that is that went through all of these things that phthalates can do to your body. And it's gone before the US government and they are slowly starting to ban them and take them out. But you can't take them out of everything. And they don't have to be listed. They do not have to be listed as a product. You can look at your products and they're not an ingredient because they're a byproduct somewhere else in some other form of it. Anyway, there's also a 188 National Academy of Sciences page, page of the National Academy of Sciences, of um, research on what phthalates can do to you. So here's what they can do to you. They have linked them to asthma. ADHD, breast cancer, obesity and type 2 diabetes, low IQ, neurodevelopmental issues, behavioral issues, autism spectrum disorders, 
altered reproductive development, and male fertility issues. Yeah. I just, I, I don't even know. I don't even, I, I just, I don't even know. So, anyway, what, what can you do to avoid them? Look at your plastic products. If it says recycling code three, so it has a little recycling symbol and the three on there, what can you do? Don't use those. You can also um, avoid fragrances, and I'm going to get into that completely separately here in a minute, but phthalates are in fragrances. So if your product doesn't list a phthalate, it may list, it has a fragrance. And a fragrance is, it, I'm moving on, <laughs> I'm just going to go into that one later. Avoid fragrances. Get products that are listed as phthalate free. So you may have a phthalate free uh, laundry detergent and then you think, oh God, it's in a plastic bottle. You're, I guess, get over it. I don't know. I, I don't know what we're going to do, but you can start somewhere and reduce the cumulative effect that it has on you. Reduce the amount that you, you get as you get water from your PVC pipes. Anyway, PubMed, um, the CDC, all of those have some wonderful information. Next, I'm going to talk about fragrances, synthetic fragrances, artificial fragrances. Anything listed as fragrances are synthetic. Back way back when, when perfume was real and they used oils and flowers and all of that, um, the perfume companies petitioned Congress to to allow them the ability to not share what was in their um, perfume because it was a trade secret. Makes sense. Legitimate reason. I don't want Coco Chanel stealing my formula, which by the way has just a disgusting amount of synthetic fragrances. But anyway. You didn't want fragrance company A stealing the formula from fragrance company B. And so what you did is you got to list that as a trade secret. Well, that loophole was never closed once they were able to synthesize smells and fragrances. So instead of saying, I'm using 23 chemicals to get my strawberry smell, they just listed as a fragrance. These fragrances contain those phthalates that I was just talking about in a very angry, passionate manner. You, the Environmental Working Group, found more than 75% of products listing fragrance contained phthalates. Hormone disruptor. Bringer of bad, bad things. All because we want something to smell good. I want my strawberry shortcake smell. I don't, but people want strawberry shortcake. Strawberry shortcake does not smell like that. That's because I don't know what's over here that I'm gesturing at, but it's over here. That's because it's synthetic. It's not real. And people don't understand that. They don't understand what is real anymore. And on top of that, to get around listing fragrance on there, they don't have to. They can put it as another phrase because it's not a fragrance if you get fragrance free. Sure, I'm going to get the clear stuff. I don't want fragrances. I don't want all of that crap all over me. So these list as fragrance free or fragrant free. Well, great, except for there's a fragrance to cover up the chemical smell because it doesn't smell like the 20 chemicals that it's made to use. It smells neutral. Well, neutral because it's got a fragrance to cover up the chemicals. So you just... You just can't escape it, and it's horrible. All right, so they have also, um, your chemical fragrances also are made, 95% uh, of them are derived from petrochemicals. Oil, that's what they're derived from. Just literally soak that one in. The chemicals in them also contain the benzene, or benzene derivatives, contain the phthalates and aldehydes. They also have um, other toxins in them that are capable of causing cancer because everybody loves that. Birth defects, nervous system disorders, and allergies. Some of them are even listed on the EPA's website as hazardous waste. Awesome. Let me spray some hazardous waste on myself. Mmm, love that strawberry hazardous waste. All right. I gotta settle down. 
Again, you can look up fragrances um, on EWG. You can Google them. Some of them are going to be in PubMed, but not as extensively as the SLS and the phthalates. Parabens, however, they're on, they're on the uh, FDA. They are on PubMed. They're everywhere because parabens are synthetic um, preservatives. Those were started in the 1950s, obviously before they realized how awful they were. And they were put into beauty and health products. And I'm glancing down because I have my whole long list and I can't memorize it all. So the if you want to avoid the parabens, literally just scan your ingredients. And if it says paraben somewhere in there with like some other prefix attached to it, it's paraben. I mean, it's a, it's a synthetic um, preservative. So... Here's what they're in. Deodorants, toothpaste, shampoos, conditioners, body lotions, makeup. And they're in those to stop the growth of fungus, bacteria, and potentially damaging microbes. Sounds like a good plan, Stan. I don't want to be smearing microbes all over my face. Okay, I probably am anyway. But I don't want to be smearing bacteria or fungus. Probably am, but whatever. Um, however, that doesn't stop there. In addition, <laughs> disgusting, disgusting. I found that out, Melanie, about the phthalates. I was not able to have my dinner without saying some bad words. That's <laughs> not the point. Um, researchers have also found that 90% of typical grocery items have some measurable amount of parabens. Great. Love that organic apple I'm having. Seriously? Parabens everywhere. I don't need no stinking preservatives. If it's not meant to last, it's not meant to last. They have found ways, if you want makeup that's paraben free, it's not gonna last you three years. It may last you six months. Listen, there's stuff I have to put in the fridge if I want it to last longer. That's how we keep it preserved. Or can it? Don't want some canned makeup. But if you want makeup that doesn't have a preservative in it, you're going to have to use it in six months, maybe a year. There will be ways to extend that, I'm sure. But as of now, I, I don't use any makeup. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, is the fire engine red still coming out? I don't use a lot. But most people do. So make them aware. You're putting a preservative on your body. You're putting a preservative on your skin. And it's absorbing it into your body. And then it's processing it. And your body is having to to deal with an inundation of all of these chemicals. All right, so why are parabens so bad? Again, they don't have a safe limit because they say they're so small. Well, my little foundation or you know my toothpaste that I use, all of those are little amounts, tiny little amounts, but they add up. Again, this cumulative effect of all the things that we use. They say the average woman uses 15 products on a daily basis. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff from head to toe. And you don't have to, but most of us do. That's why men who use quite a few less products tend to not have so many issues. That's a gross generalization. I know that. So what do parabens do? They're hormone disruptors. They're linked to increased breast cancer risks and reproductive toxicity. And they mimic estrogen and this is why they're so bad because they mimic estrogen by binding to its receptor cells and all of that increased estrogen is bad for your body um the eu has actually banned them in 2012 we should get with the program we're a little pokey on that but maybe in 20 years we will so again this is one that you probably really need to delve into um and understand yourself because it's going to be linked to probably more risque topics like breast cancer or cancer in general or hormone disruptors and that's just not something that I feel comfortable telling you about I want you to go and do your research because those are some pretty weighty topics and I think that it's important for you to make your decision not me all right I should probably do the hustle because I'm already over my 30 minutes anyway the last one I want to talk about is triclosan or triclosan, whatever you want to say. It is usually added, is actually just banned. I'm sure everybody heard about the big um, FDA ban on it in uh, September of 2016. 
but it was added to um, liquid hand soaps, to um, antibi any antibi antibacterial soaps, to reduce or prevent bacterial contamination. Here's the caveat. It was banned in those soaps and body washes. It was not banned in Colgate Total toothpaste, pretty awesome, um, and in some cosmetics. You have to read the label for that. But what is not regulated by the FDA, and therefore is not anywhere near a ban, are your um, clothes, your kitchenware, furniture, and toys. If it has an antibacterial or um, germ-killing label, try to stay away from it because it usually has triclosan. So that's just something to be very aware of. Um, the big issue that they're trying to figure out is, is it breeding bacteria-resistant antibiotics? So nobody wants bacterial-resistant antibiotics because I want my penicillin to work. I don't want to die of some simple infection. So you need to use your own body's immunity. Relying on hand sanitizers that have an antibacterial process isn't building up your immunity, and you are actually helping some superbugs form. Keep that in mind. Do your part. It's also a possibility, uh, it's possibly a hormone disruptor. Again, PubMed, some CDD, CDC, FDA stuff will have it, but PubMed's going to have a very in-depth one where you can Google and see what you find. Um, it's also linked, and the Mayo Clinic actually had a great article about it, so you may want to go look at the Mayo Clinic, but it is linked to um, possibly being harmful to your immune system. Again, you're putting it in jeopardy. So, what can you do? I use Young Living. Everybody knew where this was going. So here's how we keep um, ourselves out of that. So in that list that I showed you were all the chemicals that are in cleaners. We use the Thieves Cleaner. The Thieves Cleaner has a handful of ingredients. Um, most of them are essential oils. This we use on our counters, we use in the bathroom, we use on the floor, we use in the glass. You can add some vinegar and oil to it and it makes a great glass cleaner. You can use this in your toilet, uh, on the bathroom sink, on the bathroom floor. You can make it as concentrated or as diluted as you want. You can make it a wood cleaner, um, better than Pledge. So this is your first switch option, to ditch all those chemicals and switch. Switch the cleaner that you literally, this is all I have underneath my kitchen sink as far as cleaners go. Pretty simple. It, it literally covers everything. Safe on granite. I actually talked to somebody who was repairing my granite, and he was very excited that I uh, used this. So, dish cleaner. I use this, and I use the dish washing powder. This, again, is going to be very um, gentle and not have that list. You can actually Google all of the ingredients on the Environmental Working Group, and it will tell you their harmful status. So, I use this to clean my baby's bottles, which probably have some phthalate or god-awfulness in them, whatever, moving on, use this. And I use it to clean our dishes, I use it to clean the baby bottles, I use it to clean my sink, whatever else I need. Um, like I said, I use the dishwashing powder instead of actual um, pods or whatever else, because you know when it's on the warning label, don't let your children get a hold of the pods, because it can kill them. Just don't do it. All right. So your next switch, laundry soap. Laundry soap, think about it. You wash your clothes in some form of a chemical and what happens? Where does it all go? On your skin, on your body. You're absorbing all of this. So we use Thieves laundry soap. It's great, it's super, super concentrated. So I don't even fill it up to the normal line on my, um, my detergent area. I just put in probably half of that and then I'm going to put up a nasty graphic about um, fabric softeners and how awful they are. Use This is what we use as our fabric softener in the wash. And why this is good is what it does is it strips off any remaining um, soap that you might have. And that's what also, also helps soften your clothes because it doesn't have the buildup of the soap. 
So we don't use fabric softeners in our uh, dryers either. This is my homemade one. It didn't felt as well as I wanted it to, but they have commercial ones that you can get at Amazon or wherever. This is my wool dryer ball. I have four this size, and then I have four probably yay big size ones um, from, uh, you can get those from Amazon or wherever you can find them. And if I want my clothes to smell of a scent, um, then I add a couple drops of essential oils to that. And then as they dry and fluff around, actually helps cut down on your drying time if you have that many in there. It will help kind of permeate the scent of thieves or purification or whatever you want in that, um, well, in that dryer. All right, so I talked about the foaming hand soaps. Thieves, foaming hand soap. This, um, my kids go through a lot, a lot of this because it's foaming and it's fun. Smells wonderful, super gentle. Again, if you want a super gentle hand sanitizer, alcohol is going to be one of the uh, ways to kill the germs. But the nice thing about this is it's got alcohol and then it also has aloe and thieves. You should actually Google the Thieves, um, Thieves, period. Usually it's the Thieves essential oil, but they did a test on the Thieves hand sanitizer and Thieves um, cleaner. And actually look at people's scientific research where they do little swabs. They do their Petri dishes, they swab them, and look at how well it does its job, okay? Thieves hand sanitizer, hand purifier, sorry. All right, I was talking about Toothpaste. Toothpaste has some nasty stuff in it. I mean, Colgate Crest, Colgate Total, one of those, is still allowed to have the triclosan in there. Tri whatever, triclosan in there. This does not. This has none of that bad stuff and all of the good stuff. If you don't like fluoride, no fluoride. I know some people are going to hate me for that, but this has no fluoride. I'm okay with that. We get plenty in our water, unfortunately. All right. So, your other options too. When you're making your own stuff, when you're using your other thieves bottles or whatever, glass. Let's try to keep out all those phthalates that are probably phthalates that are probably sitting in the plastic as I get very frustrated about that. The other big, big thing um, are going to be air fresheners. And air fresheners contain a slew of nasty chemicals. Especially if you like the wax melts that you can have, they're going to melt down. Well, they're going to have petrochemicals in them. They're going to have oil-based chemicals. So what can you do? You can get your handy-dandy diffuser and put water in there and a couple of drops of essential oils. And now you're actually having an all-natural way to purify the air, clean the air, and it smells great. There's none of that Febreze. There's none of that, you know, Glade spray, the potpourri poop. I'm telling you, nobody likes potpourri poop. Don't do it. Get a diffuser in your bathroom. Make your own poopery. Look it up. It's some legit stuff. Trust me. I've seen how well it works. The other thing we like to do is if you don't have... Because <laughs> it's, 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 people need poopery. Um, cotton balls. So you don't have a diffuser. That's fine. It's fine. Take your cotton balls. Put a couple of drops of essential oils on them. Put them in, I'm looking because you can't see apparently, <laughs> windows. Put them in your windows. Put them in the vents of your car. I don't have a car diffuser. I need a car diffuser. But I use cotton balls like nobody's business. I stick these bad boys in my vents. I huff them. If I've been in Atlanta traffic, stress away. Huff it because people will cut you off at a standstill. And then there's the kids in the back who have to pee the moment you're in stop-and-go traffic who are fighting and pulling each other's hair because that happens, because they're girls, because... Because. So you put a little stress away. You put a little love. You put a little lavender. Go to sleep. Cotton balls. All right. I'm going to post a lot of other ways that and products that Young Living has that you can use. Like I said, um, I don't use shampoo. I'm weird. I know. I make my own, but if I do use shampoo, I use Young Living's um, Lavender Mint, and I use their conditioner, so if I'm out and about uh, traveling, I'm not, <laughs> not going to bring my little powders and my little tea kettle and make my own shampoo, so I'll use Young Living's. I use Young Living's, um, I use their body wash. I make my kids 
shampoo, <laughs> which they hate. Um, but I use their body wash. I actually use their gel base, and then I make my own with some frankincense um, and lavender and cedar wood and all those good things. And then um, I use their facial scrub. I use their orange blossom um, face wash. So I have, and my family has done everything we can. The kids use the kids line of toothpaste and lotions. Um, you, there's lots of things that you can do. You can do small steps. It doesn't have to be Young Living. Just once you get your produce home and get it, get it out of its plastic. Put it in glass. Put it somewhere other than the plastic that will continue to leach into it. Little things like that. Make sure you wash your produce in the PVC pipes that contain all of that. But you can put a little bit of um, white vinegar. Fill up your you know your sink. Put a little bit of white vinegar and maybe some dish soap. If you have thieves, even better. Or you can get a um, thieves also uh, has the fruit and veggie wash. Or you can do that. Um, just with your vinegar, toss them around, dry them off really well, and then put them in the, the fridge. It helps you, yes, shampoo is awesome when you make it your own. Um, it just helps reduce your overall cumulative effect. And it's just step by step, baby steps. Um, if you have any questions, post them, and I will hang out for a few minutes. If you don't, thanks for sticking in. I know, I know I went over and I'm sorry I got all jazzed about it um, but thanks for joining me I know it's 8 o'clock 740 whatever time it is there and um, if you're like me you either have kids who are in bed or no life and that's why you're watching me so hey to everybody except May who stuck in and is way out in a very different time zone so thank you for giving up your Saturday to say hey um, but for everybody else, thanks for coming in to say hey and ask uh, any questions that you have. If you don't have any now, you can always post in the comments and I will answer them the best of my ability. I'm going to post um, the products that Young Living has that you can uh, look at, review if you want them, get them. If not, totally get it. And you can also um, just ask, ask yourself, what can I do? And just Google be your own best advocate and figure out what the little steps, again, they don't have to be a product that you can do to help reduce what goes on your body. So thanks a lot and um, ask questions and I will post everything that I talked about either um, tonight or tomorrow because it's going to take me a minute to type all this up. So thanks, thanks for coming and I will talk to you all later. Bye.